Love is simply one word. It's unspoken. The foundation of life. What is this all about? There is no greater narcotic on this planet. You can line them all up and it won't come close to the dopamine hit that you get from love. Because love don't even have to touch you to make you feel some kind of way special. Who said you can't be happy? Who said you can't have love? The problem is we waste too much time expecting someone else to give us that. When the key is to look in the mirror and to give it to ourselves first. That's right. You've reached the right place if you're seeking the knowledge and wisdom of love. That is the art of love with Dr. O. And I'm yours truly, Dr. O. To all my love angels out there in love land, keep up the good work bringing all these beautiful love angels into our happy family of love. Continue work. Continue. And I'll be here every week at 8 o'clock to put a smile on your face and to give you a better understanding of there is an art to the art of love. Well, you guys already know if you've been tuning in long enough to know that one of my favorite segments of the show is uh, let's talk about it. And I didn't say let's yell about it. I said let's talk about it because if you're not talking to the person that's in your life, you ain't loving them. Love ain't got nothing to do with yelling. And you ain't raising nobody. If you committed in a relationship with somebody, you're not committed in a relationship with a child. You got to talk to somebody like a child. You got to yell at them. You got other things you need to talk about. But in this segment, what we're getting ready to talk about next, yeah, we're going to talk about it. Because this is the art of love with Dr. O. So let's go on ease into this and let's, let's talk about it. Let me ask you something. Yeah, yeah. When you were younger, like seven, eight, nine, or mm-hmm. ten, did it? Did love in the atmosphere and society feel different than what it is now? You think? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. What changed that? You think? Oof, man. I I don't want to get canceled. Um, right. You know. Uh, uh, it, it, you, it, you know, when, when you're when you're growing up, there was um, a certain standard um, that you kind of had to live by, and um, and and it was tougher. Um, you know, there were there were more there were more requirements on you. Um, it, you you like back back then. Um, so so, if so you right got there, in, right there I, when I, you I would, said when you said it was tougher, hmm? when you said it was tougher, yeah. It was harder. Yeah. This is what I say to that is there was a time when transportation was walking, then became a mule, became a horse, mm-hmm. became a horse-drawn carriage, Model T Ford. Uh, fast forward, we're in electric vehicles. But at the same time, if you ever got in a fight in elementary, even though you were young, it was just as serious as it was to someone <laughs> as an adult. So I don't know about times being harder, maybe just different. Um, you know, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's different because, see, um, we could we could do things and not be reprimanded for it. Because the eyes wasn't amongst it. You know, there was no cameras. There was yeah. no cell phones. There was no accountability for a lot of things. So I'm, I'm trying to pull back when it comes to my kids not to, not to feel so old to, to make them think that I'm stubborn in my ways. And I open my <laughs> mind to say that, of course, things were different for my parents. And from a physical aspect, yeah, it was physically more demanding. But as we all know, the mental stress can really send you in. You know, I remember when I was a kid, 
these this uh I saw this youngster in Zodies and he went back and told my whole classroom. I saw Arthur Brown at Zodies and everybody broke out laughing. <laughs> Cause Zodis was a uh, yeah, yeah 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 so and but my my question here's, here's, here's my, the thing, my here's question the thing is, that nobody ever took into account but I didn't realize it back then in order they said where did you see him at the shoe section way in the back but you saw him because you was there too right but then nobody takes that into account yeah, but see the stress for me being a youngster was just a classroom mm -hmm. but now for kids the stress is not only the classroom or are the school? There's other schools. There's other cities. It's it's the mental is everywhere now for them. You, you, you know what? What I hate what raising kids in this era, um, in, in comparison to how I was raised, um, the accessibility and stuff. I mean, I we we don't have enough time to do it. But let, let me let me let me just say this. Uh, I'll, I'll say this, Love Angels, kids. If you're getting bad grades nowadays, yeah. it's a choice. So look, <laughs> series would tell you the answer. Go ahead. Right. Let, let, let me let me just tell you. Tell you I, I, I don't I don't want to get I don't I'm, I don't want to get in trouble. I have a whole lot of different opinions, but I'll say this, and I want people to really really understand what I'm saying. I, I I'm gonna tell you what I feel, me personally, what the biggest problem with the world today. Hey, watch your mouth now. Now I'm gonna tell you what the hey, biggest don't get problem. In trouble. No, no, no. I'm gonna tell you what Come the biggest. I'm gonna tell you what the biggest problem. Watch your mouth. No, brother. listen. Look. Hold look. on now. And, pe and a lot of people are not gonna. They. they and and, and see, when I say this, everybody already said about the teleprompter. When I say this, watch your mouth now. When, when I say this, you know they do to people, man. No, when, no, no, no. Listen. listen. Okay, I'm listening. I, it's gonna be. It's gonna be something profound. <laughs> and when I say it, Here they're not even going to realize. How much of how 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 many people do that? Okay. So I want you guys to listen to me very carefully. You know the biggest problem right now with the world today. Here we go. The biggest problem with Take the world time. today Come on now. that people rather me like your post than me personally telling you you're doing a good job. I've I've literally have have people was like, hey, I've been seeing you on social media. You've been killing it. I've been watching your interviews. I've been watching your clothing line blow up, whatever. You know what? You're doing a really good job. And you know what they tell me? Well, how come you didn't like anything on Instagram? It's more important for me to like what you're doing on Instagram than for me to verbally tell you face to face, eye to eye, you're doing a great job. That's ridiculous. The the lack of of personal connection mm -hmm. is 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 what really, in my opinion, really is destroying the world. Because that person that told me she was like, "Well, how come you like me?" So I said, "Well, shoot, let me let me go on the phone." And I like would have liked every post, and they got mad at me because they thought I was making fun of them. I, but I was telling them, I'm verbally telling you, I'm having a conversation with you, and I'm I'm telling you what I see you're doing, what you're building up, what you know it is looking great and amazing, but you rather me like your post than than to actually give you a verbal could man they, to man could, confirmation. But, but, but could you even possibly? Could they even possibly fathom the understanding of what you're saying? Because if you if if you if you're born on Mars, would you have a desire to be on Earth? I mean, would it feel different to you? See, they're born into we 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 transition. I'm talking about we but, transition through. But see, what you're saying. I'm talking about people that's thirty and forty years old. Oh yeah, well they. Be, you, I, know, I, yeah. you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, and and and, yeah. and and because because of that, then it. And we all have a little bit of it, right? You know what I mean? Uh, I run the studio, so obviously we want lights and followers, and so we right. all have a little bit of it, right? But, but the requirement for personal conversation, you know, interaction, you know, it, it's it's. So where did that come from? You think that's something that's taught was taught to us to 
the that if you got more of this and you know because if they taught everybody I, the I less you I, have, if they taught everybody the less you have, the cooler you are, then everybody would want big numbers. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I think. Um, uh, uh, um, I mean, the, the, the biggest problem is we're teaching that to our kids. Yeah. That's the biggest problem because it, I and, and look and, and I'm um, I thought it was cute when I saw my one and a half year old on the iPad uh-huh. pushing her finger. Uh-huh. Now when she's fourteen, I'm like, oh my god. My brother said something very profound. He said um, he doesn't think that. Um, Kids should have access to these distractions until they are of age, like eighteen, however old yeah. it is, for you to be responsible yeah. to smoke. Yeah, you know, it should be. It, they should have an yeah. age limit to where, you know, but you know, then they it'll slow them back from being with technology. But at the same time, it's just I understood what he was saying with that. That. Yeah, it, it's it's very it's very difficult to to create a balance, you know. Um, you you at the, I was saying that there are no bad kids, there are bad parents, and and um, what 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 I see it all the time with the, because even back in the day when we were growing up, the only time we got a little DVD player or whatever when we was going to Vegas, we was going to Vegas a four hour ride, you know what I mean? We can't even go. These kids right now can't even go to the supermarket without having like any additional stimulation, you know, yeah. uh, uh, or, or conversation. Like you, you know, you wanna. I, I go and I try to talk to my kids in the morning. I, you know, tell them talking about class, and it's so annoying. They rather, they rather me text them a question. I want to know what the long term effects of having those things in your ear. And yeah, the visual the visual long time effects of your on your eyes. It, it's it's very um, it's very telling. I, you know, it, it, it's it's it, it's it's definitely a programming that is getting created. Um, so we just have to be careful. I mean, you know, you call I'm gonna call them love angels. Hey, we we just have to be really cognizant yeah. into really understanding yeah. um, what's going on with the world, and we have you know, to make sure. That we have confidence within ourselves, like you know, like I said, you know, in in your show, you know, we we've had all walks of life people come in and and they'll go and they'll they'll say that they're confident and and they they know what they're doing and 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 I'm looking like oh my god, you know, I just want to give you I give them a hug because you know it, it's it, it's it, people have learned to build an armor. You know, but not really right. understand like to the core. But I, you've done you've done done great work, man. I I, I really have loved Thank the you. conversations that you've had with people. I've seen I've seen you touch the soul of, of people, you know, and, and, and talking to them. Um, and it's, and, all and it's a wonderful thing. United One Protection Services. With over 30 years of experience, United One Protection Services has more expertise and knowledge than the other security companies combined. Residential, commercial, municipal, or institutional, United One Protection Services does more than just security. We protect your livelihood. United One Protection Services. Three, the relevance of three is so powerful that I've even said in earlier segments that there's three souls inside of you. There's two voices that you constantly hear, and scientists have proven this to be true, that the matter that exists inside your brain, that energy, Buddhist monks know this as well, chi, That energy exists inside of your gut. And some would call that more of a lower frequency, and it can be strong. When something doesn't feel right, it will tell you, hey, leave me alone. Leave it alone. Don't go over there. Don't go over here. Come back. (laughs) You know? So, and often enough, if we are led by our gut, it can get us in trouble. And then when we feel passion, when we feel love, it's all up here. It's in our heart. That's 
something that your mother taught you if you had a good one. So sweet is it to be in love for the first time. Music sounds different. Your thoughts are amazing and there is no, like I say in every beginning of the show, there is no greater narcotic on this planet that can even come close to love. You can put them all together and they won't come close because love can make you feel some kind of way special without even touching you. These are the two voices. Give them a chance. Give her a chance. That's all up here. You don't have to be so hard on them. Your gut, nah, forget all that. Forget them. Told you you shouldn't do that. And as these t voices talk, these souls are speaking to each other. It's the one on top of your shoulders that make the decision between the two. And that would be three. See? You know, spiritually speaking, they speak of, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, three has been amongst us for an eternity. And, you know, I don't want to get too deep into uh, science as much as I love it, but there's something special about us coming to exist on this planet that's far greater than our desires to be selfish to one another. And... To be human is to give. It's to give. It's the one thing that separates us from all other species is our ability to give. And of course, that's love. A lion, when it eats, it doesn't say, don't eat too much, save some for the next pride. That would be us. That's what sets the bar for humanity. It isn't our intelligence like we would like to believe because we're the only species on this planet that drinks something other than you always see this sitting on the table. And that's because it's water. We're the only species that drink something other than water to quench our thirst. We're the only species on this planet that puts smoke and fire in our mouths and create our own demise and manifest our own stress. You know? There's a lot to be learned from, uh, from nature. There's a lot to be learned from nature. I think that might be another segment to, to speak on is how much love gives us from nature. How much there is to learn from nature teaching us the values of life. Even from raising your kids, the simplicity of a bird feeding this young and preparing it for flight. Could you imagine the stress that if we were birds, humans couldn't handle that? Because as humans, instead of nudging our kids out the nest, we'll put them on our backs and start flying around with them and try and feed them while they're sitting on our backs. There's something to be learned from birds, and that is you got to allow your child to find their own way to fly. And think about that. As dangerous as it is for a child to fall, could you imagine if we were human, the stress for them to fly because the result of a mistake, we know what that is. We couldn't handle it. And that's why birds have wings and we don't. Everything on this planet has a reason. I'll give you an example of a beautiful reason that none of you probably have even stopped to think about. Well, Doctor, you say everything is made for a reason. What are tears for? Is there anybody out there in Loveland that can give me a good example of what tears are for? Well, there are no mistakes made. 
tears is the pressure relief valve for the soul. It allows other human beings to see that there actually is a soul inside of me. And when that pressure builds up, be it if it's from joy or from sadness, tears allow you to see that there is definitely a soul inside of me. So remember, the next time you look at the number three, you'll probably be looking at it in a different way. Because like I said, in order for something to exist, it definitely takes something greater than it. That would be your parents creating you. That would be the most abundant source element that exists in our universe. Hydrogen, helium, and oxygen. We can't even see oxygen, but look what it does for us. And that's the greatest love, is the unseen love. Life isn't who you are when you know the world is watching you. Life is who you truly are when you know that no one is watching you. Do you still have the morals, the values, the dignity, the honor? Do you want to know who you really are? Look at your dreams. Do you still hold the moral values in your dreams? That's who you are. And I must say, I'm happy who my parents raised me to be. And the only way I can stay close to them after them going through the transition of life is it isn't death. Did you realize that we've always existed? The elements that exist inside of you have always existed inside this universe. And that energy is something that can't be killed. As it exists inside you, this is many moons inside your mother's, father's, mother's, as it shall came to exist inside you and exist inside the kids that shall bear the fruits of your labor and your hard work and the thoughts and the energy that you manifest inside them, they should carry it on. And that truly is the everlasting life of that energy. And that's something that you can't kill. Teresa, the next question is from Teresa from Valley Village. Dr. O, I've been married and divorced twice so far. And I think I want to get married again in my life. I want marriage in my life again. I'm 50 years old. Am I crazy for saying third time's a charm? Well, it depends on what you want out of your life. You know, you have to look at your prior marriages and say, how much of that was me? Was it me? Or was it my significant other? See? And as long as you're honest with that, then that makes it easier to step into the third possibility. You know, some people have been married twice, divorced twice, but did they have a husband? Did they have a wife? See, if it wasn't your fault, you did what you're supposed to do, but for some unknown reason, and reason beyond my understanding, because I don't know the situation, but you know, they probably just didn't do what they're supposed to do. And if that's something that you look back over your past marriages, and you say, okay, I was wrong in that aspect of things. I, maybe I should have listened more before I was quick to judge. And then you fine tuned yourself and stepped into your second marriage. And maybe you said, okay, I could have been a little bit more supportive. But ultimately, as you look back 
over both your marriages, that wasn't a deal breaker for neither one, that maybe it wasn't you. And yes, Teresa, you are crazy for thinking that third time wouldn't be a charm. See, the only reason why it wouldn't be a charm is if you didn't learn something from your other two. Sometimes it takes you to go through those things so that you can actually appreciate the third time. You know, I remember when I, um, I got married for the first time. It's, it's, it's amazing. And the reason why I told you earlier um, about being married twice, divorced twice, but never having a wife, because I've, I've done that. You know, the first one, I paid all the bills and um, told her to play with her money, and she made good money, and I still gave her money. I was old-fashioned that way, you know? And, you know, often enough, you, you give somebody the world, and they think that someone can give them more, but they find out the hard way that sometimes in life, when God gives you a gift, you got to hold on to it. So that was, that was me. And I know that if you're honest with yourself, that possibility of, of it being a charm is, is very true. And, you know, it's not an easy thing to give love and not to receive it. But for you to still have hope for that, and a desire for that is a beautiful thing. You know, sometimes you have younger relationships when you're kids and you, you kind of fine tune your way out of those to actually know exactly what you do and don't want from someone in a marriage. And maybe you were invested in schooling and learning that instead of learning in relationships, you was learning in school that it took your marriage for you to figure that part out. And hopefully, Teresa, that's something that you did. And uh, feel free to invite me to the wedding. I'll even speak if you like, because I am a hopeful romantic. I believe in love, and I know that love is a true possibility, but like I always teach all of you, it always starts with who? You. You loving you. And that's how I end all the shows. You make sure that loving you is a priority thing for you to do. So, Teresa, make it a charm. That's what I say. Learn from your, your other relationships and say to yourself, this is going to be a good one. This is going to do it for me. And hopefully you just take your time and find the right person. I'm going to slide this in here before I, I go to the next one, and that is... Uh, a mother told me when I was nine, um, son, it's not important how much you love them. It's as important as it is how much they love you. Teresa, if you look back over your relationship and you realize that you was given 110%, well, just make sure that before you get excited about things, that this person is doing the same thing. And if you do that, you have a beautiful marriage because whatever's standing at the altar, that's what it is. Don't think if something's standing at the altar that it's going to be better. Mm -mm. Sometimes, you know, it's going to drop a little bit. That's why they tell you to uh, reach for the stars because if, if you don't get the stars, at least you're still in the sky, you know? So just keep that in mind, and don't forget to invite me to the, uh, to the wedding. I see nothing but beautiful things for your future. And we'll go to the next one here. And this is from Erica from Carson. So I recently started taking steps to properly loving myself in order to be able to love others properly. Excellent. It's very hard being a single mom working 40 hours a week and still finding a way and time to make sure that I give myself proper love. Can you give me some ways to make loving me easier for a busy woman? Yeah. You know, 
to all the mothers out there, it's not easy being a mom. It is not being easy being a mom. You know, even for me, when I uh, when I give my my kids mom child support, um, I often remind them that I know that it's easier to give child support than to do the work. And a lot of men, as men, as alpha men, not kids, you know, some ladies, you're dealing with kids if you're hackling over uh, child support and he's not taking the responsibility of that intimate moment. And of course, uh, ladies, I told you, uh, life exists on this planet because of the decision that you made. So if you gonna have somebody participate in the upbringing of the life that you decided to exist on this planet, make sure you choose wisely and don't choose no child because if you choose a child, he's gonna argue with you nickel and dime and penny for that child support. So as a man, a man would let ladies know that it's not easy being a mom and taking care of kids. On the flip side, it's easy to drop off a couple hundred dollars a week and, and disappear and go on with your life and think that that's raising kids. That's not raising kids. That's not raising kids at all, you know? So men, remember, it's a lot easier just to drop money off than it is to raise kids. So Erica, I'm happy that you actually tuned in and you became a love angel. Of course, that comes with an apology to yourself and you're pursuing your happiness by loving yourself. Well, I would say, Erica, one of the ways that you can make it easier for yourself to love you and have time for you is to, if you have a calendar, you say that you work 40 hours a week. If you have a calendar, jot down your time for going to work the time that you have for cooking, for uh, nurturing, for educating the kids. Jot this all down. There's 24 hours in a day. You're sleeping eight hours. Hopefully you're sleeping eight hours, which I know you're not, but jot this all down. And then see what time is available to say, this is me time. Because like I said earlier, you're not loving no one else, not even your kids, unless mama's loving herself. So make sure that you select the time that's me time for you to love you. Now, for ladies, I say this to a lot of my clients. It's an amazing way to love yourself, to make yourself feel good by don't rush the shower. You know, give yourself some extra time in the shower for the hot water to hit your neck, the back of your neck. Let it massage you, let it soothe you. Get lost in your thoughts of loving you. That's one of the easiest ways, Erica, for you to love yourself. It's just by you giving yourself time in the shower to soothe yourself, to please yourself, to get lost in your thoughts before you step out into the reality of yeah, 40 hours a week and kids is not easy. So hopefully, Erica, that's a little easy way to for you to find a way to love you. And that is get that calendar, jot that time down, 40 hours to the job, the kids, educate, nurture, and loving. And there's about 30 minutes right here that's open for me. Don't give that away to someone else. You make sure you leave that 30 minutes for yourself because you need it to protect your sanity. 